morning. How are you all this morning? Why don't you stand with us? We're going to make a joyful noise, and all the people that are out in the lobby are going to hear us singing. They're going to say, what is going on in there? we got to come and join them. Can we make a big noise this morning? Come on. together.
church at South Edmonton and I am so glad that you decided to join us this morning for church. If this is your first time here, your first time in a while, I want to encourage you to get connected. There's a connect card in the seat pocket in front of you. You can fill it out, drop it off at the hub after the service, and we want to get you connected. We believe in finding your fit here at Case and there's a place for everyone. So. We'll sign you up, we'll get you emails so that you know what's going on throughout the week and upcoming throughout the summer. We have a lot of things planned for the church and for the community. And furthermore, if you have something that you need prayer about and you wanna bring it to the church, you can email us at prayer at thechurchsc.com. We would love to stand in faith, partner in prayer with you. And alternatively, if there is something on your heart that you wanted to share about how God has moved in your life, we would love to hear your story because we share our testimonies with the church, with the congregation. Why? Because it is miracles that move in our life are not necessarily for our faith, but for the faith and the testimony of others. Amen? That's great. One of the other ways that you can get involved with what the church at South Edmonton does is through your generosity. So there is a booth set up at the back, ready to receive check, debit, cash, credit, whatever is convenient for you. If you're watching online, you can give through our website. There's a portal, Subsplash, or you can give by sending an e-transfer to give at thechurchsc.com. We believe that this is important because it is a core principle laid out in scripture. We believe that when you put your faith first before your finances, that this allows God to work in our lives. Amen. If that's on your heart today, then I want to pray for you. And I want to pray for the mothers today as well. 
Father God, we just thank you for who you are and for what you have done for us, Lord God, that you do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. I pray right now over the, over the mothers in this room and who are watching online, Lord, that they would be called blessed, that their children would rise up and praise them because there are so many noble women in the world, but the women here, Lord God, that have your blessing and your mantle on their lives, Lord, they are extraordinary. And we just give them honor today. Father, I pray for the tithes and the offerings that we're about to receive today, that you would bless them, that you have plans for them, that you see the giver who is giving out of faith, Lord God, and you meet every single need. And we pray that you would bless the tithes and offerings, that they would go further than we could ever ask, dream, or imagine. And all God's people said, amen.
heaps of glory we sing once more worthy 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 lord forever forever worthy 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 lord another glimpse of glory we sing once more
Lord, you are worthy of all of our praise. If all, of, if all we did was praise you and thank you for who you are and what you've done, that would be, that would be everything, Lord God. You're worthy of it all. You're worthy of it all. You created us. You saved us. You're at work in our life. You have a future and a hope for us. And Lord God, we pray that you by your spirit would build, even this day, would build into our life more and more of your words, your plans, your promises, your ways, that you would put our lives back together again the way that we're always intended to be, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people shouted. Give God a praise, come on church. Go ahead and take a seat. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be here. Are you glad to be here? Can we thank the worship team and the tech people for all they do for us every week? Happy Mother's Day to all the mommies out there. And uh, just before the service, one of the sisters in the church came to me and just told me a story. Uh, she was saying, you might remember just, I can't remember when it was, th maybe three weeks ago or something, we did, he we did healing, and she came forward for prayer for healing, and she was telling me that after that, like not immediately, I think, I'd, I need to get the details, I'll get the details off you later, but maybe a week or so after that, instead of feeling better, she felt absolutely terrible. So she checked her blood pressure and it was dangerously low. So she called whatever number you call, and they told her to call 911. So she called 911, and they took her in. And here's what, here's what had happened. She was on medication that lowered her blood pressure. But then she came forward for prayer for healing. And the Lord lowered her blood pressure. And the medication lowered it even more. So the doctor took her off the medication, and now her blood pressure is totally normal. <laughs> God is a good God. He has good gifts for his children. And uh, we're looking at the fact that God wants the best for his children. You want the best for your children, don't you? And he wants the best for his children. And we've been looking at success secrets from Scripture, that in the Bible, there are lots of principles taught that will enable us to live the best life that we can possibly live. You know, if, as long as, you know, a nuclear war doesn't happen, um, somebody uh, arrests you and throws you to the lions like happened in, to the, uh, the early Christians, you know, providing a crisis doesn't happen, as long as you're in your normal, the normal uh, flow of life, let's look at what our definition is for success. Do you want to put that up? Here we go. This is our definition that we're doing. Living a fulfilling, stable, and truly abundant life Hey, let's read this together. Can we read? Oh, I forgot the kids, didn't I? <laughs> I was so caught up in the Holy Spirit. That's what it was. Bless the kids. <laughs> Anoint them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go out that door. I suddenly realized people were sneaking out. And I thought, this sermon is either bombing really bad, or I forgot, yeah, yeah, you can go, bless you. Off you go, off you go. <laughs> you people in the tech booth, just shout next time down a microphone, you forgot the kids. Maybe I'll have a little earpiece in. Yes, Lord? <laughs> the kids. Yeah, anyway. In Jesus' name, <laughs> we cast thee out. And, right, living <laughs> success is living a fulfilling, stable, let's read it together, living a fulfilling, stable, and truly abundant life 
as you discover and progressively achieve your God-given unique purpose. And the Bible contains practical advice for living a successful, fulfilling, and meaningful life. So that's the definition we're going on. We're saying that God has created you as an individual. He's wired you in a certain way that he has, you have a God-given potential and your life is God's gift to you. And now it's up to you to do something with that life because one day we will stand before him and present our life back to him again. So we've been looking at different principles. Today we are looking at the topic of excellence. Shout out excellence. 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 And here is my definition of it, or, or by explanation. You have been given by God, you have been given certain gifts, you have acquired certain skills, and even that's given by God. Remember, we're not talking about us doing the best to live the best life we can so that God will be pleased with us. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the fact that God and us are now in partnership. As the Apostle Paul said, we are co-laborers together with God. You have entered into a relationship with God, right? So together, you are building this life. And not only does God give gifts, but even skills that you acquire and lessons you learn through life are all part of God's providential steering of your life in a particular way. So you have been given certain gifts, you have acquired certain skills, you live or work in a current location. In order to qualify for promotion, you need to do the best with what you currently have. You need to do things with excellence. So maybe you've got a job you don't like, and you think, well, I'm not putting in any effort here. I'll wait till I get my dream job, and then I'll put in effort. You're never going to get your dream job, buddy, because promotion does not come from man, the Bible says. It doesn't come from the east or the west. It doesn't come from kings or people. Promotion comes from the Lord. And if you are not faithful in little, you will never be made ruler over much. Isn't that what Jesus said? Like, did I just make that up or did Jesus say that? Did Jesus say, he who is faithful in little will be made ruler over much? This side of the room thinks that's true. Did, did Jesus say that, this side of the room? Did he? Yes. So, you, ha you, you don't... You don't exert no effort because it's, well, I don't really like this house, so I'm not going to actually fix anything up in it. I'm not going to mow the, mow the grass or anything like that. I'll wait till I get my dream house. Yet you're never going to get your dream house because no one's going to buy that dump that you're living in, right? How about you do the best with what you currently have and show to God that you are someone who is faithful with little and therefore can be trusted with much. Okay? Listen, see if it's not worth doing with excellence. Just don't do it at all. There is nothing that irritates me more than churches that do things shoddily and then say, well, it doesn't matter because we're not doing it for man's approval. We're doing it for the Lord. Oh, so if you were doing it for man's approval, you would do it really well, but it's just for the Lord. Just give him a heap of garbage, you know? You know? I think if anybody should be doing anything with excellence, it should be God's crowd. 
And I think if we're doing something for the Lord, it should be even more excellent than if we were doing it for man. Excellence. Take what you have. Take what God has given you, the gifts He's given you, the personality that He has developed within, within you, the skills and experience that He has providentially led you through in life, the, the possessions that you have, the job that you have. Take everything. I mean, you don't give birth to a child and then say, that thing's not walking or talking yet. Uh, forget it. Wait till a better one comes along you know? You take that child and you make it become the best little baby it could possibly be, you know? And so, you take what God has given you, whether that is financial or material resources, whether that be people that you're in relationship with, whether that be uh, internal skills and, and, and personality strengths and gifts that you've been given, take everything you've been given and make it the best it possibly can be. And then if you do that, you will be promoted. You will outgrow where you currently are. You see, we always want to change our outward circumstances, but God wants to change the inward circumstances. And when you grow as a person, when you grow into a person of excellence, Your boss might not promote you, but the Lord sees it. You outgrow your current circumstances, and you grow into the new life, the position that you're looking for. Um, Let's just look at the next, let's look at the next uh, passage here. It's from the book of Daniel, and Daniel, this is a really interesting story. I've got two Two biblical stories for you here. They're both from the Old Testament, and they both tell the same principle, and it's this. You see, God's people, you know, God chose a nation. It was the nation of Israel, and He led them into the promised land, and uh, there were times in the promised land that God's people were doing really well. Under King David, the the kingdom enlarged, and under Solomon, the temple was built. They were doing really well. And there was other times that they were doing really badly. They would turn away from God. They would turn to false gods. They would turn to sin. They would do all kinds of things wrong. And whenever that happened, they would get themselves into difficult situations. They would be uh, slaves in Egypt. They would be invaded by the Babylonians. All kinds of things would happen to them. And every time the nation was in a bad state, do you know how it was turned around? God would raise up an individual, a man or a woman, who would rise up and do the thing that needed to be done that nobody else was doing, and not only do it, but do it well. Execute it proficiently. Do it with excellence. And when that happened, that not only brought freedom, brought deliverance, brought blessing to that person, but it brought it to all the other people. Do you know sometimes all it takes, maybe you come from a family that has been dysfunctional for a thousand generations. It just takes one person to say, I'm changing it today and you will change it for a thousand generations to come. So Daniel was one of these situations. God's people had been invaded by the Babylonians, captured, because they had turned away from God, captured and taken as prisoners to Babylon. And they were like, they were kind of like uh, serfs or um, in dentured servants or something like that. They had to do a lot of hard work while they lived there. They weren't exactly slaves like they were in Egypt, but they they weren't living their best life, okay? Uh, But the Babylonians noticed that some of these Jewish people that they had brought over, some of them were quality people. Some of them were people of excellence, and they thought, we need, to, we need to make use of these people. And Daniel was one, look what it says, an excellent spirit. 
Do you see that excellence begins within? It starts on the inside. An excellent spirit. Listen, if you're going to do something in life, do it with a spirit of excellence. An excellent spirit, knowledge, and understanding to interpret dreams and solve problems were found in Daniel. Right, so first of all, Daniel was a spiritual guy. Daniel walked with the Lord. He even had spiritual gifts. He had the ability, the prophetic ability, to interpret dreams, okay? So if you want to be a person of excellence, make sure you're a man or woman of God. Make sure you're walking with the Lord. Make sure you're being guided by Him. Make sure you're going down the paths that He's leading you down. Make sure you know how to discern God's guidance. That was what Daniel did. He knew how to discern God's guidance. But more than that, he also had a lot of knowledge. Look, an excellent spirit, knowledge. Some people would rather fight you to the death than learn a new piece of information. You know? It's like, don't tell me any facts. I've already made my mind up about everything in life. And that's not the way to become a person of excellence. The way to become a person of excellence is to have a hunger for knowledge, to be a lifelong learner. I heard, a, I heard someone tell a story that they were at a graduation, a university graduation, and uh, watching one of their kids graduate. And they, they, they heard one of the other students got their diploma and came off and came down and they overheard the conversation. The student sat next to their friend and said, thank goodness that's over. I'm never reading another book in my life. Well, I don't know what that person got at university, but they didn't get an education, right? Because someone who got an education realizes that knowledge brings growth. And the more knowledge you have, the more you will grow. But knowledge isn't enough. Because you could be a walking encyclopedia. You could have lots of knowledge about everything. But when someone comes to you with a problem, you don't know how to take that knowledge and apply it to bring about a solution. Knowledge is information, and wisdom is knowing how to apply that information to solve problems. Now, I am sure this is probably common in lots of areas of life. I only, because I'm a pastor, I only know it from church life. But I want to tell you something, after being a pastor for three decades, I have found out that Christians love to point out problems, but never come with a solution. Never come with a solution. In fact, they want the pastor to solve everything. Uh, hello, can I speak to the pastor? Yes, this is the pastor. How can I help you? Well, you see, Maybe I shouldn't tell that story. <laughs> okay, let me just say this. I have had people come to me to talk about the problems in their sex life, to talk about the problems in their bank account, to talk about the fact that their boss doesn't like them and they're sure it's because they're a Christian and he's a Freemason. All these stories, they're all. Come and tell me all these problems. And then I'll say, well, I'm sorry to hear that. What, what you want me to do? Well, what should I do about it? Hold on a minute. I'll take my pastor hat off. Let me go and get my sex therapist hat right now, okay? <laughs> right. Have you tried this? You know? <laughs> what, you're, you're a 40-year-old adult and you've never worked out how to solve a problem. We need to be people who are problem solvers, right? That's what people of excellence are. And look, 
And Daniel became distinguished. When you become a person of excellence, people notice it. When you're walking with God, when you're growing in knowledge, and when you're applying that knowledge in a way that solves problems, people notice it. And it says here, and Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials because an excellent spirit was in him. And look, the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Well, it's not fair here because I've just got this little shack and I'm just working flipping burgers at McDonald's. And look at these people with all the blessings over here. And, and if, if I had what they had, I would look after it, but I'm let. No, I am going to take what I've got. I'm going to be the best. I'm going to flip burgers so well that someone's going to make a TikTok page of me and call me the miraculous burger flipper. And then employers are going to see that and contact, you know, become the best that you can possibly be. Do it with excellence. And if you do that, the king might just set you over the whole kingdom. You know, this isn't, Daniel wasn't the only guy. Daniel was one of the 12 tribes of Israel. But those 12 tribes of Israel, if you go back to the very first book of the Bible, if you go back to the book of Genesis, there is a story of the 12 sons of Jacob whose families became the 12 tribes of Israel. And in those 12 sons, one of them also had a spirit of excellence. His name was Joseph. And the story of Joseph shows how no matter how difficult a situation might be that you find yourself in, if you will partner with God in faith, and if you will act with excellence, God will continually lift you out of that situation and into something better. Let's have a look. Book of Genesis. It says, the Lord was with Joseph, and he succeeded in everything he did. Now, whoa, hold on a minute here. The Lord was with Joseph. Where was Joseph? Joseph, remember a few weeks ago, we spoke about having a vision? And do you remember I said, be careful who you share your vision with? right? Talk to God a lot about it, but be careful about talking to people about it. You see, Joseph had a dream, a dream that God had given him, that the day would come that he would be a person in a position of authority that would be able to end up saving his whole family. But he told his brothers that dream, and they were jealous. And they told him, hey, you, think, you think you're going to do all that? you're just a little brother. You're not going to amount to anything. And they were going to kill him, but instead they sold him to slave traders. Sold him to slave traders. And then look, here he is, now a slave. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egyptian master. Maybe you don't like flipping burgers at McDonald's. Maybe you don't like whatever job you're doing right now. M maybe you don't like uh, the situation that you're in. Maybe you feel like God is not blessing you, that God has abandoned you. But the fact of the matter is you need to, if you can reorient your mind to the fact that the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. When things are going good in your life, the Lord is with you. When things are going bad in your life, the Lord is with you. And if you can acknowledge that the Lord is with you when things are going bad, then you and God can turn out those things around and make them go another way. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did in the home of his Egyptian master, his Egyptian master, Potiphar, that's the master's name, noticed this and realized the Lord was with Joseph. Potiphar noticed this. Wouldn't you like it one day 
when, if your boss called you into his office and said, I just can't help but notice this, but since you've come to work with us, everything is booming. What's your secret? The Lord is with me. Keep on my good side, buddy, and the Lord will be with you as well, okay? <laughs> the Lord was with him, and he noticed this, um, giving him success in everything he did. This pleased Potiphar, so he soon made Joseph his personal attendant and put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. All of a sudden, this guy went from this level to this level because when he was at this level, he did things well. He did things with excellence. Put him in charge of his entire household and everything he owned. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless Potiphar's household for Joseph's sake. All his household affairs ran smoothly and his crops and livestock flourished. Do you know, sometimes we might feel like we're not doing well in life because we're not in some prominent situation. You know, today's Mother's Day, and, and mothers do a lot. In fact, do you know that Mother's Day is the day when the crime rate is at its lowest? What are all those mothers doing every other day of the year? When... <laughs> it's like one day a year we, 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 we corral all the mothers into restaurants and the crime rate drops. I mean, there's something to that. <laughs> but you know, it can be a hard job being a mother. It can be a hard job being a single mother. You could think, oh, I'm so busy with these kids and I don't have time to do anything and I'm exhausted all the time and I used to volunteer more at church and now I can't and I just don't feel that I'm doing anything for the Lord. If all you can do is make your household affairs run smoothly, you're on the right track. You're on the right track. If all you can do is make your home run, you are fulfilling the word of the Lord. And God is looking at you, single mother or married mother or whatever mother you are, and, God is, and saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You're making your household affairs run smoothly. And all the dogs and guinea pigs are flourishing as well. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. Now, there is a drawback to doing things well people give you more work, okay? So it says here, gave him complete responsibility. It, with Joseph there, he didn't worry about a thing except what kind of food to eat. I mean, this was amazing. Now, you know what happened. Uh, we, we, read this, we read this when we were looking at the word success the first week. And I mentioned then that Joseph, the Bible says Joseph was a very good-looking guy. And being attractive can sometimes cause you real problems. Take it from me. <laughs> and and uh, Potiphar's wife, she also noticed Joseph. And she came on to him a few times, and he resisted. And she me tooed him. And said, made up this whole story um, that, he, that he had attacked her and all that stuff. And as a slave, he should have been put to death. But I suspect Potiphar didn't fully believe his wife because instead of being put to death, he was just thrown into the prison. Great, now I'm in prison. But guess what? In prison, Pharaoh, while he's in prison, Pharaoh has a dream, two dreams actually, that he knows are significant. And someone says there's a guy in the prison who knows how to interpret dreams. Let's read this la last bit from Genesis. It says, so Joseph comes out, interprets the dreams, and then gives Pharaoh advice. Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh, 
and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God? Wouldn't you love it if people, secular people, unsaved people, people who don't know God were to say, wow, that, that person is so obviously filled with the Spirit of God. I don't mean because you're jerking and falling about and speaking in tongues all the time. I mean because your life is so excellent. Uh, there's so much favor upon you that they've got no other explanation. Look, so obviously filled with the Spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court, and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher that, than you. Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land of Egypt. Back to the person flipping the burgers. Well, that Justin Trudeau, I could run the country better than he could. Right, okay, maybe you could. How about you flip burgers better than anybody else can? And then how about you manage the business better than anyone else can? And then how about you take the next step? Maybe one day you will run the country better, but not with that attitude. Only when you become a person of excellence and say, what God has put in my hand, now I will do the best I possibly can. Being a person of excellence means you've got an excellent attitude, it means you've got an excellent work ethic, and it means you are becoming more and more excellent at using the skills that you have been given. And also, you're someone who is partnering with God, whose faith is in God, who is obviously filled with the Spirit of God. And if you can be a person of excellence, when your dying day comes, and you're lying on, in your bed, about to close your eyes and give up the ghost, and you know that you're going to heaven not because of what you've done, but because Jesus Christ died for you, paid the price for you, rose again from the dead for you, and sent His Word and saved you. You know your salvation's secured, but you're maybe a little bit embarrassed about how your life has gone. But if you're a person of excellence and you have taken that life that God has given you and you've done something excellently with it, there's no embarrassment, there's no fear. Here's what Jesus said that you'll hear at the end. My last slide, Matthew 25. The master said, well done, my good and faithful servant. Isn't that what you want to hear? When I, listen, I'm glad I'm going to, like, if I go to heaven and I don't get any blessings or rewards, I just get salvation, I will thank God for all eternity. But I want to live my life with excellence and do everything that God wants me to, to do. And when I die, I don't want to hear badly done, half-heartedly done, shoddily done, cheaply done, stingily done. I want to hear, well done. There's only one thing that you don't want well done. That's your steak. Everything else, everything else should be, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities Let's celebrate together. Is that what you want to hear from the Lord? Come on, let's stand. Let's stand together. And instead of saying a prayer, we're going to sing it. We're going to sing in faith that that day will come, that we will hear the Lord saying, well done. And then we will say to him, actually, Lord, it was you that did it all. You did it through me, but it was you that did it all. And all the glory goes back to him. Can you say amen? Stay.
today and once again happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers I pray that you guys feel celebrated that you feel recognized that you get a little bit of peace and quiet but we're still kind of wondering what's for lunch I'm just kidding today after the service we have a brunch or a lunch over in 9910 so I encourage everybody to give your moms a break and join us for fellowship and some food. We have a catered meal. I'm gonna pray for the meal and I'm gonna leave you with the priestly blessing. Father God, we just thank you for today. We pray that you bless our food and our fellowship as we gather together, Lord God, that your name would be glorified and that great relationships would come out of celebrating together and communing together. We pray for the hands that prepared it, that you would bless them, and that you would bless every single mother in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. And I'd like to leave you with the priestly blessing. If you know it, you can say it with me. If you want to receive it, just hold your hands out. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face towards you and give you peace. Have a great week. We'll see you over in 9910 for brunch.